taking the reins following the king's recent cancer diagnosis. Queen Camilla is set to take a little break, heading somewhere sunny, reportedly. So it comes as online rumours continue to swirl around the Princess of Wales, though, who is still on leave following surgery earlier this month. So two big royal stories knocking about today. Three, if you include Prince Andrew. Yeah, Prince Andrew too. Well, what should we start with? Joining us now is royal correspondent Michael Cole. Let's start with a spot of sunny holidays, why don't we? <laughs> Queen Camilla needs a bit of a break. She's off somewhere. Any idea where she might be heading off to? What top destination? Uh, good morning, Emily. Good morning, Patrick. Uh, here's the scoop. Uh, the Queen does not ring me up to ask where she should go on holiday. Uh, she's taking a break. She's 76 and she doesn't like long jet journeys. So that rather limits the possibilities. The Caribbean, I think that's eight or nine hours. I've only been a, about four or five times. I think it's about that, that time in the airplane. Um, she will probably spend a lot of time down at Ray Mill, her house down in Wiltshire, where she's able to see her grandchildren and enjoy herself and relax. <clears throat> of course, um, it would be difficult now uh, with the uh, king uh, undergoing cancer treatment, treatment for cancer, to have uh, children around him and, and anybody from the outside the immediate family circle. So um, it's interesting, last week at the memorial service for uh, the former king of Greece, uh, Constantine II, uh, she obviously took uh, pride of place and uh, was at the reception with half of the monarchy of Europe there. But she didn't stay very long. After about um, 15 minutes, uh, she went away. Of course, it's a bit of a strain, uh, but she's doing the job well and she's had to step up uh, because of the absence of, of her husband from uh, direct public life. Of course, he's carrying on with his public duties, <clears throat> doing his red boxes and all the rest of it. Uh, but it's quite sensible for her, for him to become uh, uh, mm. apart from from other people at, at most of the time. Yes, yeah, so I think she deserves a, a little break, doesn't she? Can we just pivot now and talk about um, Catherine, please? Because th there is speculation about how she is and exactly what the issue is. Um, Kensington Palace released a statement earlier on, didn't they, I think, uh, saying, look, just back off, basically. We've told you that she's ill. We've told you that she's recovering. Um, please stop speculating. I mean, the problem is, mm -hmm. is that there is an unbelievable amount of speculation, especially on social media, some of it actually really distasteful mm -hmm. as well. What do you make of, of the length mm -hmm. of time it's taking Kate to get back on her feet? Yeah, Patrick, of course, you're absolutely right. But I think it would be appropriate and I think uh, you would like it if I expressed our collective uh, good wishes to the Princess of Wales for uh, a prompt and speedy recovery. Um, it's a bit of a difficult situation because there she is, she's a public person, but she's also a private woman. And this is very much her decision. Uh, Kensington Palace did issue a statement saying, uh, that uh, she hoped that the public would understand, and I read this bit, her desire to maintain as much normality for her children as possible and her wish that her personal medical information remains private. I think I can quite understand that she doesn't want her children going to school and some other kids saying to them in the playground, what's, what's, what's wrong with your mum? You know, what, what's happening with her? And if there are rumours in the paper, it could be very difficult. She's entitled to her privacy, uh, and like any woman or like any person about her medical history. Yeah. Now, she, you do remember, I'm sure, Emily, you remember, she had very, very severe morning sickness birth of her first child, Prince George. But And afterwards, she came quite, she's, she's spoken about that, and she's mentioned it. So she's not entirely coy about it, but quite clearly this is a private matter to her. Uh, Kensington Palace, for its part, when confronted by the worst of the most these rumours, has said they're ludicrous. I think the other one, total nonsense. And I've of, co of, of course, the problem is that nature abhors a vacuum. And when you get a news vacuum, it gets full of rubbish. And, you know, rumour is a lying Michael, day. Michael, just, just, we're, we're running out of time, Michael. I just want to say, front page of the mirror, Andrew faces court bombshell, <laughs> Epstein evidence to be made public by special decree. Yeah, this is a, a matter which, 
frankly, I think uh, Prince Andrew will never, ever put behind him his disastrous uh, friendship with the late and unlamented uh, financier Jeffrey Epstein. The opprobrium of that will stick to him. And what is happening now, and Ron DeSantis, the uh, governor of uh, Florida, lately a, a presidential candidate for the Republican Party, he's getting involved in it. And women who were childhood victims of Epstein now are pushing very, very strongly to get released letters that Prince Andrew may or may not have written to the U.S. government to get Epstein a, a, a sweetheart deal, a plea deal in 2008, when he could have gone to jail mm. for his offences for 15 years, and he got away <clears throat> with 18 months, and he only spent less than a year in prison, and the rest of it is his mansion in Palm, Palm Beach. So if uh, Prince Andrew did write to the British government, to the American government, saying, please be soft and kind to my friend Jeffrey, uh, then that's going to become public. Mm. And it's worth remembering yeah. that disastrous interview that Emily made with this. Even oh, yeah. then, oh, yeah. Andrew said some complimentary things or said some positive things about Epstein. And what he didn't do, and this, is, I think, is unforgivable, uh, she gave him the opportunity right. uh, to apologise to those victims, and he didn't take them. And that was uh, to his great discredit. Yeah, Michael, look, thank you very, very much. Whizzing us through three big thank royal you. stories today. All the best to you, my good man. Take care. That is Royal Correspondent Michael Cole.